We are the Anopheles Mosquitoes, and we are here to teach you about malaria. Let me introduce you to my kids first. I am Vivax. And I'm Ovali. I'm Falciparum. And I'm Malaria. Before we start talking about the individual types of malaria, let me talk to you about malaria in general, okay? And by the way, if you ever forget that we're talking about malaria, just note that I've taken my hair off and I put in this male, male hair for malaria. Here, isn't that malarious? <laughs> Additionally, you can remember that plasmodium causes malaria because I am the papa at the podium. Papa at the podium for plasmodium. Again, malarious. You'll note that I have this floating globe over here, and I've highlighted the regions in the world where malaria is highly present, and you'll note that there's this, like, belt known as the malaria belt, like, in which we've got, we got Latin America over here, we've got South America over here, and we've got Africa and South Asia over here. Before I let my kids start talking, let me just tell you a mnemonic to help you symptoms associated with malaria. M is gonna be for malaria. A is gonna be for anemia. L is going to be for liver failure. A is going to be for altered consciousness. R is going to be for round and round fever, a cyclic fever. I is going to be for infant death, miscarriage, if a mother has it. And A is going to be for abnormally large spleen due to splenomegaly. Okay, I'm actually going to take over over here. So basically, they were either in mos mosquitoes over here. We're talking about plasmodium. Plasmodium causes malaria. And the reason why mosquitoes were the ones talking about it is because it's the mosquito, the female mosquito, the Anopheles mosquito, which transmits the protozoa. So here we go with the different types. On this scene, we have the mosquitoes that set up this slide to teach about malaria. So there are many different types, but there are several types which are primarily infect humans. So we have these over here. We have Vivax and Ovali. So we have over here, the V and O in the bed that are sort of sleeping, and that's because Vivax and Ovali can lie dormant as the hypnozoite form in the liver. And that's why we have a picture of the liver over here on the bed. And O and V are sleeping. We have the two thermometers over here to help us remember that the cyclic fever in Vivax and Ovali is every two days, every 40 hours. So it'll be on day one and day three. Then we have, and over here we have a blood smear with a picture on it, which we'll explain in a second. Then we have this falciparum form, that's over here, represented by the next mosquito. This is the most severe symptoms and most deaths associated with it. It causes irregular fever patterns which are almost continuous. It could be continuous. It's generally every 24 hours, it could be every 48 hours. And the parasitized red blood cells occlude, occlude capillaries in the brain, which is cerebral malaria. And this happens because the falciparum type generates a sticky protein that coats the surface of red blood cells and they make them stick together. And that causes all these problems. And it go to the kidneys and liver. And that's why we have the F1 here, representing falciparum by the grave. To help us remember that this one, this is the one that causes death, most death. Then we have the, the malaria form, which causes a cyclic fever every three days. Now, as we have the three thermometers under the M, to help us remember that the fever occurs every three days. Now, diagnosis for malaria is made through a blood smear. Blood smear, and that's exactly what we had smeared on top. Over here, we had this blood smear over here. Now, there, this picture over here specifically is referring to the blood smear seen with Vivax and Ovali, because there's going to be red granules known as Scuffner stipplings. I think that's how you pronounce it, throughout the red blood cytoplasm seen with Vivax and Ovali. But in general, they look for a trophozoite ring form within the red blood cell or a schizont containing merozoites. One thing that's important to remember about Plasmodium Vivax is that there are certain, that red blood cells have a certain Duffy antigen and various chemokines attached to this Duffy antigen. Plasmodium Vivax also attaches to this and that's how it gains entry into the cell. Sickle cell patients lack this receptor, which provides them with resistance actually against plasmodium. Another point is that people with GD6PD deficiency, their red blood cells that are infected with plasmodium will be more susceptible to death. Now treatment for plasmodium is very complicated and it depends on the person, it depends on what stage you're up to in the disease, but just really quickly is that chloroquine is often prescribed for the sensitive species. If there's resistance, mefloquine or atovaquine or proguineal. In case of life threat, they use an intravenous quinidine or artesanoate form. And for Vivax or Ovali, they add primaquine for hypnozoite. Okay, that was really brief and that was not, not at all comprehensive, but um, I hope this scene was memorable. Take care.